Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we are diving deep into Luvium's affinities. Whether you're a seasoned gamer or just starting out, understanding affinities is crucial for building a powerful and synergistic team. Now right quick, I apologize, I thought this was going to be a quick and fast video until I remembered exactly how much goes into not just understanding strengths and weaknesses, but also the language, like knowing what grit and resolve mean or how to best utilize the blind effect. And in this video, I did my very best to give all of it to you. So if you're looking for something specific, make sure to check those chapter links below. Otherwise, we're going to break it down bit by bit. So by the end, you can talk the talk as well as walk the walk. First things first, what are affinities in Alluvium? Well, Think of them as the elemental essence that defines your alluvials and shapes the theme of your team. There are five primary affinities. You have fire, water, earth, nature, and air. Each alluvial has one affinity, which can be either a primary affinity or a composite affinity, which is a combination of two primary affinities. Now, the affinity of your alluvial will give in-fight bonuses that strengthen the overall power of that specific alluvial or group of alluvials. For example, if you want to benefit from the bonus that's given to fire alluvials, you'll need to make sure you have at least three fire units on the field. If you manage to get five or even seven fire units, you'll gain even more bonus stats from all the units of that affinity. Just remember, this also means that if you only have two fire alluvials on the field, then the bonus will not be activated and no one will be getting those extra benefits. When it comes to composite affinities like Inferno and Shock, the activation requirements are two, three, and four units. Now, with the exception of Squiz, every stage one alluvial will only have a primary affinity and every stage three alluvial will always have a composite affinity. When it comes to the stage two alluvials, sometimes they have a primary affinity and sometimes they have a composite affinity. Whether an alluvial is a primary or a composite affinity, they'll only ever be able to benefit from one of those affinity bonuses. Now, while the classes are what define the role of an alluvial on your team, the affinities kind of define the theme that you're going after. For example, if you play a stage one alluvial like Atlas, you know, he can easily fit into a water-based team. But if you play a Fisto, your team might be a combination of fire and air, since fire and air make up the shock affinity. While some alluvials will have one of the five primary affinities, and some alluvials will have a composite affinity, which, remember, is a combination of two primary affinities, every alluvial will have what is called a dominant affinity. The dominant affinity is like the heart and soul of your alluvial, their home base, the core element that defines them, and it's based on one of the five primary affinities. When it comes to alluvials that have a primary affinity like fire, water, air, or earth, their dominant affinity can only be that primary affinity. For example, let's take Atlas, an alluvial with a primary affinity of water. In Atlas's case, its dominant affinity can only be water because that's the only element that makes up its composition. However, and here's where it can get a bit tricky. And if alluvial has a composite affinity, which as we said, is a combination of the two primaries, things get a little bit more interesting. Let's take magma, for instance, a fusion of earth and fire. An alluvial with a magma affinity like Seer can have a dominant affinity of either fire or earth. It all depends on which primary affinity within them is strongest. Now, while we remain in beta, players of the arena will be able to choose when building their decks on the alluvium site whether they want to put a Seer in their deck with a dominant affinity of fire or a dominant affinity of earth. In the future, when you're out in the overworld capturing alluvials to use in the arena, it's important to know that the dominant affinity of the alluvial you capture will be random. This means that sometimes you might need to search and capture multiple alluvials of the same type if you're looking specifically for a certain dominant affinity. So why do dominant affinities even matter? Well, there are two main reasons. The first concerns your ranger. The ranger is a unit on every team that represents you, your avatar, which will fight alongside the alluvials that you've chosen for your team. Now, without any weapons or suits equipped, the ranger is pretty weak and vulnerable and a bit of a blank slate without class or affinity. Rangers are able to be bonded with an alluvial that you have placed on the board. When a ranger is bonded, they take on the dominant class and affinity of the given alluvial. By using this aspect and adding in a weapon to our ranger, which also possesses its own class and affinity, we're able to give our ranger a composite class and affinity. 
Now, the second reason that dominant affinity comes into play is in the hyper bonus bar. This bar goes up when your alluvial is in proximity to an affinity that they counter. Once that hyper bar is full, that alluvial will gain what's known as a hyper bonus. A hyper bonus is a boost in power that remains with the alluvial for the rest of the match. For example, if you're water and you're up against a fire alluvial, your hyper bonus bar will start rising. However, here's the twist. The hyper bonus bar is dependent on the dominant affinity. So if you have a steam alluvial, which is the fusion of fire and water, and it's pitted against a fire alluvial, but the dominant affinity of your steam alluvial happens to be fire, then the hyper bar won't be affected. Since they share the same dominant affinity, neither would gain an advantage over the other. If you want to keep an eye on your alluvial's hyper status in the arena, there are these three tabs to the left of your play screen. The first shows you your current synergies. The next is going to show you alluvial damage output as the match progresses, as well as healing and shielding. And the last will show you how far your alluvial has progressed to their hyper bonus, as well as the bonuses that they will receive once those hyper bars are active. Also, and one of my favorite features and really a great tool for those who are still learning the basics, by staying on the hyper tab, you'll notice that the numbers pop up around each alluvial, showing you whether an enemy is strong or weak against a given alluvial when you're in survival arena. Those numbers will adjust both as you place new units and as the match progresses. So if you really want to figure out what's good and bad, go ahead and top into survival arena, whether you're trying to climb the waves or just training. It's really a, a really great tool for you to use. Now, let's clarify a crucial point about affinities in Alluvium. In many other games, when one affinity is strong against another, it typically means that the first one deals more physical or energy damage to the second. For instance, water being strong against fire would imply that water deals more damage to fire units. However, in Alluvium, the dynamics are unique. Here, the advantages and disadvantages based on affinities do not directly affect how much damage your alluvial deals through regular attacks. Instead, they primarily influence the growth of that alluvial hyperbar bonus. So if your alluvial's affinity counters your opponent's affinity, it won't result in dealing more damage with each hit. Instead, it contributes to filling up that hyperbar. Once that bar is full, your alluvial will gain those powerful bonuses that enhance its overall performance. Importantly, these bonuses apply to all enemy alluvials your alluvial faces, not just those that they counter. Now that we've cleared up on that affinity misconception, let's cover each affinity, their strengths, their weaknesses, and what the advantages are when you get those affinity synergies. It's important to note that every alluvial will only ever contribute to and gain full bonuses from one affinity. So if your alluvial is toxic, for example, even though toxic is a combination of water and nature, it will only contribute to the toxic affinity and gain full bonuses from that toxic synergy. We're gonna start off with water. Now, water affinity has a natural advantage against fire and earth. To help you remember, we can think of it as a powerful hose that can extinguish a bonfire or a flood that washes away the soil. However, it's not as effective against air and nature where it's like water evaporating into thin air or getting absorbed by the plants. When it comes to synergy bonuses, water affinity excels at providing your team with extra energy regeneration, especially for water units. In Alluvium, energy is your alluvial's mana, so to say. In the arena, it will be that blue bar under your alluvial's health bar. Throughout the match, these will fill up, and once these bars are filled, it will allow your alluvials to automatically cast their omega abilities. Water is going to give your entire team a partial energy regeneration bonus, while all of the water-specific alluvials will get a full water bonus. Water in general is very versatile affinity because basically all alluvials can benefit from energy regeneration, allowing them to cast those powerful omega abilities over and over and over again. A tip for maximizing water affinity is to build a team that can control the battlefield with a strong defensive presence. Consider pairing water units with high health and regeneration for added resilience. These are going to be your Scion and your Empath unit, or composite units utilizing that, these classes. These classes are going to add both to general Omega power, how hard you can hit, as well as add in that shielding and healing so your team can last longer. 
fire affinity thrives when up against air and nature as it consumes oxygen and burns the natural world. And in my opinion, it is truly a formidable choice in these matchups. However, fire is going to struggle a bit against earth and water. It's like trying to burn solid ground or extinguish flames with water. In terms of synergy bonuses, fire affinity boosts your team's overall damage output with a more significant increase for fire units. So a unit that originally hit for 100 damage might now get a 30% increase and is instead hitting for 130 damage. To make the most of fire affinity, you should create a team focused on aggressive play and high damage. The best units for these are going to be classes like rogues, scions, or composite units that utilize these base classes. Earth affinity dominates against fire and nature. Think of it as halting plant growth and smothering out those flames. However, it's not as effective against air and water units. In terms of synergy bonuses, Earth Affinity enhances your team's grit and resolve with a more significant boost for Earth-specific units. Grit and resolve are defensive attributes that reduce the damage your alluvial is taking in. Grit reduces each instance of physical damage received. For example, if Scarabok is coming at you with 200 physical damage and your alluvial has 25 grit, you're only taking in 175 of that damage per attack. On the other hand, Resolve reduces each instance of energy damage received. So for alluvials like Tatapi coming at you with 200 energy damage, if you have 25 Resolve, you're only taking in 175 of that damage per attack. These attributes are going to help your alluvials stay on the battlefield longer and withstand those enemy attacks. So to really optimize Earth Affinity, you're going to want to build a team with a sturdy and defensive core. Earth units can serve as anchors, kind of allowing your team to withstand those incoming attacks in controlled battlefield. The ultimate units are classes like Bulwark, where their entire job is to hit and get hit. When it comes to air affinities, this one is a bit harder for me to remember because it's not as intuitive as some of the other affinities. Air affinities are going to be strong against earth and water and weak against fire and nature. In terms of synergy bonuses, air affinity grants your team additional dodge chance with a more significant boost for air units. Dodge chance is the probability that an alluvial will successfully dodge incoming attacks, whether that be physical or energy attacks, rendering those attacks ineffective. It allows your alluvials to evade damage and stay safer on the battlefield longer. Also, a secondary bonus for air alluvials is that your enemy's first Omega cast will cost additional energy. This essentially gives you a bit more time at the very start of the match to get positioned or deal more damage before having to worry about your enemy's Omega going off. To make the most of air affinity, focus on building a fast and agile team that can control the battlefield mainly through evasion. Units that tend to benefit most from this are going to be empaths. Empaths mainly focus on shielding and healing, and by adding in dodge chance, you have a unit that is a master at survival and can really hang in there during those tough moments. Nature affinity is going to perform the best against water and air and the worst against fire and earth. When it comes to synergy bonuses, nature affinity benefits your team with additional health and max health regeneration with a more significant boost for those nature specific units. Additional health is like a temporary shield that adds extra hit points to your alluvial's existing health pool. It provides a buffer against incoming damage, effectively extending your alluvial's lifespan. For instance, let's say your alluvial has 200 health and gains an additional 50 health through nature affinity. This means they effectively have 250 health for the duration of the battle. This additional health can be crucial in those really critical moments, allowing your alluvials to withstand powerful attacks that might otherwise defeat them. Kind of like having an extra layer of protection. Now, max health regeneration, on the other hand, focuses on gradually restoring lost health points over time. It's like a natural self-healing process that kicks in during battle. For example, if your alluvial's max health regeneration is 10 per second and they are missing 50 health, it would take five seconds to fully recover that 50 health. Max health regeneration can be a valuable asset for sustaining your team throughout prolonged battles. It allows your alluvials to recover and stay in the fight longer, gradually healing them back to their maximum health potential. 
what it mainly boils down to is that nature affinities are all about sustainability and battle, building a team focused on adding additional health or gradual healing. Like air, this affinity pairs really nicely with empath units who already have healing and shielding built into their class. So you can kind of get a compounding effect that make for a near unkillable team when built correctly. Now that we've covered the primary affinities, let's dive into the world of composite affinities. Composite affinities, as we've mentioned before, are the result of two primary affinities coming together to create a unique combination. These composite affinities offer a different set of bonuses and strategies for your team. It's critical to remember that even though the composite affinities are combined from two primary affinities, an alluvial with a composite affinity will only gain the big bonus from its composite synergy. For example, a toxic alluvial will gain the team bonus of 75 health and regen from the nature trait being activated, but it would not gain the 150 health and regen that are given to nature-specific alluvials for the same activation. Another thing to remember is that while primary affinity synergies give some benefits to all members of your team, composite synergy bonuses are only going to the alluvials with that composite affinity. Starting off with Bloom Affinity, we're going to combine the forces of Earth and Nature here. It's a powerful affinity that's going to excel in boosting the survivability of your team. When you have two, three, or four Bloom units on your team, they'll blossom at specific intervals, giving you max health, increasing in Alluvial's Omega Power, and its health regeneration. Bloom Affinity is great in prolonged battles, making your Alluvial's harder to take down. It's an excellent choice if you prefer a tanky and resilient team. Units that work well with this composite are tanky earth and nature units, such as bulwarks and empaths, whose class abilities can synergize pretty effectively with that bloom affinity. Dust affinity combines earth and air elements, creating kind of a unique synergy that disrupts your opponent's strategies. See, dust units are going to blind and reduce omega power for enemies in a medium area when they're able to use their composite synergies. In Alluvium, blinding is a status effect that reduces an opponent's accuracy and causes them to miss. Now, the enemies will still continue to gain energy from their attempt at the attack, but attacks from blinded opponents won't land for the given length of time. Also, dust units affect a medium area. Last I checked, a medium area had a radius of between 16 and 25 hexes. This allows dust units to potentially blind and reduce the omega power of multiple enemies simultaneously, making them pretty effective at crowd control. Dust affinity is all about that disruption of what we talked about. So alluvials with crowd control abilities and strong initial potential like rogues and scions can really complement these dust affinities. With Frost Affinity, you're combining water and air elements, bringing that icy cold to the battlefield. Frost units will apply blind shortly after combat starts and then periodically will create frost around them throughout the battle. When they create frost, units are going to have their overall attack speed reduced. Like blind, frost is an applied condition that reduces attack speed by 3% per stack. The frost lasts for 10 seconds and can stack up to 9 times. Once the max stacks are hit, the target will be frozen for a two second duration. After that, the unit will be cleansed of the effect and everything will start again. Units that work well, this is gonna be alluvials with the ability to capitalize on that slowing down of your enemies. Scions, empaths can really maximize on these benefits, especially if you can find a way to speed up their omega abilities so they're really hitting hard. Now, Grand Affinity is doubling down on the Earth element, making your alluvials extremely durable. These units gain grit and resolve and become invulnerable at the start of combat. As we mentioned earlier, grit and resolve are going to be a straight damage reduction when it comes to physical and energy damage. Now, for granite alluvials specifically, when your alluvials start a battle, they will become what's known as invulnerable. This means that they can't take any damage for a specific amount of time at the very beginning of the fight. It's like having a shield that protects them from harm right at the start. Granite Affinity is all about building that unbreakable front line that soaks in the damage and really protects your back team. So unsurprisingly, units that work well are going to be mainly your bulwarks and anything else that kind of comes across as super tanky. Inferno Affinity can quite literally ignite the battlefield with its fiery power. 
When alluvials with Inferno Affinity use their first Omega ability, they heat things up by causing continuous damage to their enemies. It's like a relentless burning effect that keeps hurting opponents over time for as long as they live. Compounding on the natural fire destructive damage, Inferno Affinity is all about cranking up the damage output. With this affinity, you're constantly applying pressure on your opponents. The longer the battle goes on, the more pain your fiery alluvials are going to inflict. So if you really want to make the most of Inferno Affinity, consider teaming it up with alluvials that have a high damage potential, like rogues and fighters, and they can fully capitalize on that extra damage that they're dealing out. Now, similar to Inferno, we've got the Magma Affinity, which is going to combine fire and earth kind of to create a scorching battlefield. When alluvials with magma affinity enter the fray, they create a searing molten ground or all around themselves. This scorching terrain is going to inflict damage over time to nearby enemies. You can think of it as a fiery hazard zone that your opponents will definitely want to avoid. Magma affinity also provides grit and resolve to allied units, reducing overall damage to your team. Magma Affinity is going to give you both offensive and defensive capabilities, making it a pretty versatile choice. Units with AoE or Area of Effect abilities or tanky attributes can really synergize effectively with the Magma Affinity, creating a very resilient team. Next, let's dive into the Mud Affinity, which combines the elements of water and earth. Alluvials with Mud Affinity excel at energy generation. Their attacks grant bonus energy, allowing your team to use Omega abilities more frequently. This constant influx of energy can keep your team's momentum high. Mud units also have the ability to reduce the attack speed of their targets with each attack. This is going to hinder your enemy damage output, making your alluvials harder to defeat. While mud alluvials are great at supporting the team with energy and attack speed reduction, they might not pack as much of a punch in terms of raw damage compared to other affinities. Mud alluvials might struggle against opponents who specialize in crowd control abilities as they rely on constant attacks to provide that energy and debuff. So when you're looking to maximize mud affinity's potential, make sure you're pairing it with alluvials that can capitalize on those slow enemy movements or tanky allies who can absorb the damage, while the mud units generate the energy and slow the enemies down. Moving on to one of my favorite affinities, we're going to talk about toxic, which is a combination of nature and water. Toxic units are known for their venomous abilities, which poisons and weakens enemies, reducing their damage output. Alluvials with toxic affinity are potent poison spreaders. They apply poison to enemies in a medium area around themselves. Poison will deal a percentage of the target's max health as pure damage over time and can stack up to five times. Once a toxic alluvial poisons gain full stacks, it temporarily removes the target's ability to heal. This relentless damage over time effect can weaken and potentially fully eliminate foes over time, even after your toxic alluvial has died off. Now, circling back, let's clarify pure damage a bit. In alluvium, pure damage means that if an attack deals 60 pure damage, it will cause a full 60 points of damage to the opponent without any reduction or defense taking effect. So in this regard, it doesn't matter if if an opponent has grit or resolve, it will still deal the full force of the attack. With this in mind, you might consider pairing Toxic Affinity with alluvials that have abilities to amplify that poison damage or those that can capitalize on weakened enemies. Shock Affinity combines the elements of fire and air, bringing the electrifying power of lightning to the battlefield. Alluvials with Shock Affinity have a unique ability. They call these lightning strikes that target the enemy with the lowest energy resistance every 4 seconds, dealing substantial energy damage over time. Shock Affinity excels in dealing consistent damage to specific targets. On the downside, Shock units may lack defensive abilities, so they're pretty vulnerable to heavy attacks. Consider pairing Shock Affinity Alluvials with units that can protect or heal them, as well as those who can capitalize on the focus damage output that they're dealing. Units with crowd control abilities can help control that battlefield, making it easier for Shock units to strike their target. Spore Affinity is a unique fusion of nature and air, and it introduces kind of a distinct set of abilities to your Alluvial team. 
Alluvials with spore affinity have a unique advantage in that they gain dodge chance, which allows them to evade attacks. When they successfully dodge, they not only avoid damage, but also receive that healing boost and reduce the energy efficiency of whoever is attacking them. Energy efficiency acts as a crucial mechanic that determines how effectively an alluvial gains energy in order to cast their Omega ability. By default, energy efficiency is set at 100%. This means that an alluvial receives the standard amount of energy from its abilities and actions. When facing spore alluvials, it can be reduced anywhere from 4 to 8% depending on which synergy you have activated. Spore units excel in that survivability mode, making them challenging to take down because they're dodging and they're healing. However, their offensive capabilities might be lower compared to other affinities. So consider pairing spore affinities with units that have strong offensive abilities to balance out the team's damage output. Steam affinity brings together the elements of fire and water, creating a really unique synergy that can help provide both offense and defense to your team. Alluvials with Steam Affinity are going to gain an increase to their Omega Power and temporary energy regeneration. At the very start of the battle and periodically throughout, the Affinity is going to excel in providing a constant source of energy for using their Omega abilities more frequently. Now, while Steam Affinity doesn't directly improve Alluvial's damage or survivability, it synergizes well with units that benefit from frequent ability use. Now, just keep in mind that Steam Affinity doesn't address health or durability, so defensive strategies are essential if you're using this composite. Tempest Affinity really harnesses the power of the air, making for extremely agile Alluvials. Alluvials with Tempest Affinity gain dodge chance, allowing them to evade enemy attacks, and they steal energy from their attackers when they successfully dodge. Alluvials with Tempest Affinity are naturally evasive, making them challenging to target in general, especially those reliant on energy-based abilities. To maximize Tempest, consider pairing it with Alluvials that have a high critical hit chance, or those that can amplify critical hit damage. Pairing Tempest with alluvials that excel in critical hit related attributes, like rogues, can create a synergistic strategy that really maximizes on invasion and damage output. Tsunami Affinity is pure double water element combination, focusing on overwhelming your opponents with those water-based abilities. Alluvials with Tsunami have the ability to regain energy after using their Omega ability, making them capable of those more frequent and more impactful Omega hits. Overall, Tsunami can be a strategic choice for players who enjoy an aggressive playstyle and want to keep the pressure on their opponents with a consistent barrage of powerful abilities. Verdant Affinity embodies the essence of nature, offering a unique blend of healing and sustainability. Alluvials with Verdant possess the ability to heal themselves when their health drops below a certain threshold. However, it is only activated the first time they fall below that threshold. Additionally, when they activate their healing ability, they create a large healing area on the battlefield. This not only benefits them, but also helps to support their teammates by providing a zone where health is gradually restored to them. The strengths of Verdant affinity lie in its sustainability and the ability to outlast opponents in prolonged battles. It excels at keeping alluvials alive and maintaining that battlefield control through healing. To optimize Verdant, consider pairing it with alluvials that have high durability and can complement that healing aspect. Units that can provide crowd control or disrupt the opponent's strategy can also be beneficial as they can take the advantage of that healing area and contribute to the overall team strategy. Wildfire Affinity ignites the battlefield with the combustion of fire and nature elements, offering powerful damage over time capabilities very similar to Magma. Alluvials with Wildfire Affinity possess a unique ability to set the nearest enemy ablaze for duration when they use their Omega ability. The blazing effect not only deals energy damage over time, but also has what is known as Vamp, allowing them to recover health as they inflict damage. One of the key strengths of Wildfire Affinity is its exceptional damage potential. The continuous burn from the blaze can put significant pressure on opponents and is particularly effective against alluvials with lower health. Additionally, the blaze can spread out to nearby enemies, potentially affecting multiple enemies with that effect. This makes Wildfire Affinity an excellent choice for dealing with groups of enemies. To maximize the potential, consider pairing it with alluvials or augments that can really amplify its damage output such as those with energy buffs or abilities that increase the duration of the blaze. 
Units that can provide crowd control or healing support can also complement the offensive nature of wildfire. And finally, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, there's a one more affinity that I want to discuss, and that is the affinity list alluvials. There are only six, and they are all from the Lynx line. The stage one baby Lynx here begins with no class and no affinity. When it lacks in bonuses though, it makes up by dealing pure damage. So no matter how much grit or resolve an enemy has, this little guy packs a punch since he's consistently hitting that HP bar. Now, as this guy evolves into his stage two form, that damage shifts from pure to either physical or energy damage as he takes on abilities in line with the class that he's gained. While there are certain times you'll want to utilize these guys in your decks, just always remember that if you bond your ranger to them, your ranger won't be gaining any affinity from these alluvials. And there you have it, the fundamentals of affinities. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions, but please, if you have further questions, don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments. If you found this helpful, hitting that like button would be awesome. For more handy tips and updates on all things Alluvian, be sure to hit the subscribe button. My classes video hopefully will be coming out within the week. I'm here to help you on every step of your Alluvium journey, so make sure to stick around. And thanks a bunch for hanging out with me today.